Good morning and welcome from all around the world to Structural Heart Life Cases, broadcasting directly from the Mount Sinai Hospital and Cardiac Catheterization Laboratory in New York City. This is a 68-year-old male, a patient who presented who had a known carcinoid disease and had a, the tricuspid valve replacement a few years ago and now became more symptomatic with the dyspnea, leg edema, ulcers and so, and found the tricuspid valve, both regurgitation, uh, but more stenosis. And uh, clearly, the, at age of uh, 68, already, and patient also had developed now the liver cirrhosis. So adverse uh, factors for reoperation, uh, and therefore this patient was, uh, went for heart team discussion. Others are shown here, uh, the parameters, and more importantly, echo point of view. This was the echo. Uh, about a month ago. You see the LV function is uh, about 40%. The patient uh, has also moderate to severe mitral regurgitation. Uh, this is uh, the right ventricle. The size of the right ventricle is normal. The function is maybe uh, mildly decreased. So you can appreciate the tricuspid uh, bioprosthetic valve and a huge uh, right atrium. This uh, 3D image of the you can appreciate the annulus, uh, the ring of the tricuspid prosthesis, and you can see the thickened leaflets and the by leaflets as well. This is uh, with color, uh, mostly stenosis on this case, with uh, maybe mild to uh, moderate tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, this again is uh, 3D zoom image. You can appreciate the ring of the prosthesis and the thickened leaflets, by leaflets. And this is the gradient. We've got a mean gradient of 10 and a peak gradient of 14 uh, severe bioprosthetic uh, tricuspid stenosis uh, in this patient. Yeah, but does he still have more sign of recurrent carcinoid? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, so it did have some uh, cirrhosis and it was more of a rectal carcinoid. It was told that time and since then he has been uh, uh, from carcinoid point of view, it is under remission and there is no other symptoms. I just mm -hmm. first time saw that there is also mitral regurgitation, right? Yes. I mean, question yes. is how much mitral regurg is there? And I know that I'll uh, show some data that patients who are se moderate to severe both tricuspid and mitral regurgitation, that just fixing one valve may not be the answer. So carcinoid point true. of view is okay, yeah. Because when you replace the tricuspid valve, you're going to increase the preload to the left heart, and you can maybe expect the mitral regurgitation to get worse after the procedure and need a, a staged intervention. Uh, this patient, high risk, as we send, uh, suitable candidate for tricuspid valve in valve implantation. And uh, so now, uh, Gilbert, you want to comment on the CTA with the, uh, this kind of valve situation? Yeah, the patient had an advanced CKD, so then we we'll do a contrast, but because this is a bioprocess valve that has good signature, uh, we can measure the, the internal diameter, and with the valve in valve app, you can also see that uh, it's going to be a 29 valve, and I think because it's a 33 paramount, we're going to go uh, plus 2 cc, Brilliant. so. Okay, so 29 plus 2 cc. And uh, this is where the it fits in. Um, the, the superimposed images of uh, inside the uh, the leaflet, how they will look. So this is basically where we are. So our plan is 29 plus 2 cc's uh, sapien, uh, the Edward Perry Mount uh, valve uh, within the old valve. And now we are ready to start. This patient also has a pacemaker lead. And the pacemaker lead was through the original valve, I mean it's inside, and Get now and now basically uh, was repositioned, right? It was taken out. Yeah, that's plant. right. So uh, this patient had a lead across the prosthetic valve before. Uh, so we <laughs> discussed yeah. about EP colleagues, you know, we don't want to crush the lead uh, or cause paravalent leak uh, because of the lead. And uh, we decided to uh, extract the lead, but one elegant way that our EP colleagues have done essentially, rather than removing the generator and the lead itself, he just kind of pull it onto the IVC, oh, which uh, you see here in the, uh, in the floral. Now, uh, since it was a stenotic tricuspid valve, um, you know, it was a little challenging to cross, but I think you have the, you can see how we have recorded that. So same, I think, how would you cross? Usually pigtail, but uh, initially pigtail would not help us. So we had to go with the JR catheter. 
just with the J wire. And once you are there, you go to RAO view like we have right here. And then you make sure you're in the center of the valve. That's how you, you see the step, how I was getting in. Now put a little blood in the catheter so that it does not have that fling. One second, let me flush yeah. everything. So many times when you have those special catheter flings, just uh, don't put only saline, either dye or little blood. Our goal is here to get a uh, confida wire into the RV. Yeah, I think what we will do is we had a swan. First, we are going to change the swan to the pigtail quickly and then I will go with the confida yeah, wire. Yeah, I mean it's a balloon yeah. tip, yeah. balloon tip catheter. So question is whether if balloon tip catheter Reading. comes out, so make sure what uh, is being suggested, we have agilis catheter ready. But so now we have the 35 long wire into the uh, RV and now putting a pigtail. Yeah, this is the long pig, uh, pigtail also. But it is a regular sheath or agile, what kind no, of long? No, we already have the Edward sheath in. Okay. So you see the pigtail is nicely curled in the apex of the RV. Hey, it seems that there will be more mm -hmm. coaxiality from the IJ, but they're always doing from the femoral. Neil? Yeah. I think this is a good discussion point. Huh? I mean, you're going to be more coaxial coming from the femoral than the jugular, uh, but you can do it both ways. I think for patient comfort, usually femoral is a preferred. Uh, the question is, is, there, is this wire stiff enough uh, to support the sapien as a rail? Because the right atrium is huge, and as we see, there's a big loop. You are almost in the apex. Yeah, the right ventricle is very small, so I think yeah. uh, you're probably close to the apex. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, almost close to the apex. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think the other suggestion is to have the the pigtail uh, face of the wire facing the opposite direction, so that the wire is more central in the valve, and you're not having this superior to inferior or anterior to posterior trajectory, uh, which may be tough. Okay, then how do we do that? Well, it just uh, when you're doing the wire exchange with rotate the pigtail, so that the loop of the pigtail is pointing down. The other option Dr. Keeney mentioned is to put the wire in the PA and then That's you what have I have in the PA. Yeah. So we're just going to use a regular pigtail. The tip is stiffer. And you're saying the make a pigtail point down. So it will take yes. away the direction. Yeah. First time we had it. Sounds. Oh, if you could trap the wire, <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. If you could trap the wire in the PA, that would be easier. But okay, now we have to recross again. So we took the dilator out. We have the 32 wire. We are going with the multipurpose. Yeah. This is how we normally would do if we are doing the for the mitral mm -hmm. regular pigtail, not the yeah. I think you take regular six French pigtail is a yeah. bit stiffer and you can maneuver stiffer. Yeah, yeah. The long pigtail soft and that's where I think we were struggling to get it to the apex. Yes. Changing yep. the wire from confida to safari. So that's what Neil wanted. So this is what we are exactly doing. Okay, very good. So let's see the safari. It takes away a little uh, the left uh, RA. Um, hmm. Now, how do we take away that uh, loop of the RA still pull, right? Pull, pull. Pull back the. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's pull. it. Like that. Pull. Nice. Wow, it's a trabeculated RV. Is the pigtail stuck in something? Maybe wanna, pull on the pigtail a little bit. Before we... Oh. That's what you said, yeah. Before you lose it, yeah. Uh. Mm. 
asking a lot. Let's see if the maybe pig you can even cross. Itself. Yeah, maybe you can even cross. Yeah, yeah. No, Safari will not cross. This pigtail may go. That's a six French pigtail or a five French? Yeah. Five, five, five. Yeah. We have to start carrying some six French pigtails. We don't have yeah. more. Yeah. Nice, nice the, cross, Kinney. Here we go. Now just push the safari. Push it fast. Yeah. Good. Nice. We were same place like before. No, no, no. Now right, better. Here you go. Here you go. This looks is better. better. Yeah, see the RV. Marco, can you see the RV? Yeah. So far, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm taking everything out. Yeah, better. You see this much nicer trajectory now. Okay. Okay, we are pulling the sheet back so we can load the valve. That's yes, good. came back. That's great. That's Sometimes great. you are going a little bit inside. You see that? I'm advancing. Okay. Yep. Good. I'm flexing. I'm flexing. Yep. Lots of flex and gentle back tension on the wire. Yep. Which it is? Lots of flex. Pull back. Lot of flex. Lot of flex. Lot of flex. Lot of flex. Going in. Going in. Good. Good. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm going to unflex a little bit. Yeah. And then I'll pull back the hypo tube. Okay. Who's holding the wire? Okay. Right now, good. advance. Okay, good. Good. Look at look at. Like like Gentle, hypo tube, coming back. I think That's in the right it. spot. Everything is looking good. That's very good. Perhaps That's like good. Uh, this is good here. This is good. Isn't Excellent. It? I'm going up. Keep holding. Keep holding. Keep holding. Keep holding. Keep holding. All the Going way, up. The okay, full. Good. And I'm full Jenny. and zero. Okay, we need a little resuscitation. No pressure is okay. Okay, pressure is good. good. Yeah, 107. Blood pressure is 107. Very nice deployment. Yep. Okay, coming out. Stamp looks okay, we are yes, coming out. Yes, yes. Okay. I guess the question now is, uh, is he going to get anticoagulated or he can't tolerate that? Yeah, he no, could he not, may not be able even to before, give another he could not tolerate, despite mm -hmm. AFib and all, because of the severe bleed. So the, he had not been on any anticoagulation. So question is, otherwise, routinely you will do anticoagulation, right? Uh, yeah, we would. You know, in, in someone who's really at high bleeding risk, we've had some good success using uh, DOAX, like a Pixaban. And um, uh, maybe that could be considered at low dose because uh, you want okay. this valve to last as long as possible. The okay. nice thing for him, though, is you put a big valve. So if this one uh, fails in a few years, he could have another valve in valve. The orifice area is huge. Now, let's uh, say me, echo me, point of yeah. view, how things are. Yeah, very good. Uh, mean we can grade, show the main echo. Mean, put mean, echo on the main screen, please. Mean, mean gradient of two. No PVL, no TR. So what are the reported complications of this procedure, if there are any? Valve embolization. Yeah. No, let's Into hear the from... ventricle or outside? Yeah. yeah, both of them. Both. Could be either. If you're not the... holding it at the right... No, but as the pointed out also, is the valve thrombosis also, yeah. right? Neela, and no, of course endocarditis, paravalvular leak, and all no. those things, but uh, those are the worrisome. Acutely. So the plan is that? See, the main risk is embolism, and then down the line, uh, you know, thrombosis uh, endocarditis. But I think for this patient, I know he's a bleeder, but are you going to give him anything, maybe even aspirin? I mean, I think if we decide, maybe we give a very small extra. dose of uh, NOAC. Huh? I think you probably Eliquis 2.5 even once a day. This, this patient's going to have a gradient uh, in the morning of uh, four or something like that. And uh, tricuspid stenosis and biprosthetic valve, not the same as in a native valve. 
So uh, I think he has a grade in a four or five. That he will feel dramatically better compared to uh, what he just did. I mean, that RA pressure was at least 20 when we started. RVEDP was about 12. Yeah, 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 good. Put some blood inside there, yeah. So there's still about uh, five uh, millimeters. About uh, okay, show the hemodynamics, please. Can you do nitro? a zero of the uh, green color? Systemic pressure is good, it says. Yeah, systemic is 110. What about some nitro now? 120 by no, but uh, green is 60. Off. See that? Green, See, green is, off, yeah. yeah. So, One okay, second, good. yeah. Yeah, let's see how it is. Oh, oh, oh. You're good. Yeah, look All at right. that. Almost yeah. nothing. Yeah, now, now that's we beautiful. Now the hemodynamics, invasive hemodynamics, <laughs> correlating with the echocardiographic <laughs> measurements. <laughs> Very important. Yes. Keep flushing, re zero. Yeah. yeah. Tremendous yeah. success. Yes. Now the. Pulmonary yeah. hypertension yeah. is not related yeah. to this yeah. tricuspid yeah. regurgitation. Yeah. It's a problem. Yeah, no, but patient, remember, had a moderate plus MR, moderate to severe I, MR I also. So I that know. may be contributing and that what may be the next step. Now, but, Gilbert, what but, do you think about uh, fixing the mitral valve in the future? On this particular case, we had moderate plus yeah, MR let's, now. Let's see how he does at 30 days and then we'll reassess. I think that's what you usually do. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. You can because they... they, they there was only tricuspid stenosis. There was no TR. So yeah. there's only benefit now. You, know, right. you can speculate with TR that is an escape for the RV pressure. But And the pigtail was removed after putting the wire? So, yes. to, so just to say that the valve does not uh, uh, change, not affect it? Uh, with that note, uh, now tell us what are the steps so I can go with my brief no, we're discussion. We're just closing the vein. So we are just closing the vein with what? They already have a figure, per close, mm -hmm. okay. pre close okay. is there, and then they have a figure of six. Uh, you so, know, valve so point of view, everybody agrees valve is working good both hemodynamically as well as echocardiographically. We have per shown that. I think if you use a pigtail wire like you used here and a careful technique, the risk for RV perforation uh, is, is low. Um, and I think as long as you're not pushing too hard on the on the nose cone against the apex, uh, that the risk uh, the risk should be low. We I think we showed every steps here um, how to do it. If you don't um, have the edulus, you can just use your uh, regular uh, GR catheter, multipurpose catheter. But the key here was we were not able to get the wire in the apex of the RV. You have to have the looped wire in the apex of the RV so your uh, Trajectory is very good. If you don't have that, then uh, your uh, navigation of even if you have fully flexed uh, uh, the Edwards uh, valve, it is not going to get into the um, you know, correct position. So I think that is why we took a uh, meticulous time and uh, showed the steps. How would you get your uh, wire in the right position, which we did, and subsequently and everything uh, went uh, uh, one by one. Yeah. Yep. All right, Neil, uh, words from you, and then Pedro will conclude. Okay, well, I think we just saw a beautiful demonstration of a transfemoral tricuspid valve and valve implantation by an expert team. Uh, I think the future for tricuspid intervention is bright, and we're going to have a toolbox. It will be repair, replacement, try to tailor the treatment for the patient's anatomy and stage of disease. And I think we can say now tricuspid valve is no longer forgotten.